the Paralive specs were just revealed, so now we can work out if our computers will actually be able to run the game. In this video, I'm going to go through the actual specs themselves, what the specs actually mean if you're not too familiar with computers, how to check your computer's specs if you don't know what you have, some of the basics on how to check if your specs actually meet the requirements and where to ask for help if you're still unsure, and finally, should you upgrade if you don't have the required specs. Starting with the specs themselves, the Steam page gives us the specs for both PC and Mac. It also gives us the minimum and recommended specs, so recommended is obviously the ideal scenario. You'd ideally want a computer that either meets or exceeds the recommended specs to make sure that the game runs well, but the game will still run on the minimum specs. And it does say at the bottom that if your frame rate is low, lower the graphic setting, so we should have some control over graphic settings. I will go through what these actually mean in a moment, but just for now for Windows computers, for the minimum requirements, you need at least a Windows 10 operating system. The minimum required processor is Intel Core i5 or AMD Ryzen 5 at 2 GHz. For memory, you need at least 12 GB of RAM. For graphics, you need GTX 1060 or RX 6600 XT. You'll need DirectX version 11 and you also need 8 GB of storage space. And for the recommended specs, recommended operating system is Windows 11, processor is Intel Core i5 or AMD Ryzen 5 at 3 GHz, memory is 16 GB of RAM, graphics is RTX 2060 or RX 7600 XT, DirectX is still version 11 and you also still need that 8 GB of storage space. And for the minimum requirements for Mac, you need Mac OS Big Sur 11 or a newer operating system. You also need an Apple M2 chip for the processor and graphics, and you also need at least 12 gigabytes of RAM. And for the recommended specs, again, same operating system or newer. They also recommend an Apple M3 chip for processor and graphics, and at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. There's nothing about Linux here, but that doesn't necessarily mean you can't run it on Linux. I did see that some people are planning to try it on Linux when it comes out, so if you are considering trying to run it on Linux, I probably recommend waiting for other people to try it out and see what happens. But yeah, I think with these specs, I think most people will be able to run Paralives, especially if you have a newer computer. But obviously, if your computer is older or you're running an old laptop or have an integrated graphics card, you might struggle. And if you have a Mac, you need to be mindful of the chip. I don't have a Mac, but I don't think the M1 chips are particularly old. So if you do have one of those, you might not be able to run it. But just because it's not listed doesn't mean you definitely won't be able to run Paralives. You still might be able to. And I will go into that in a second. Now we've gone through the recommended specs, what do they actually mean? So I'm only going to go over the extreme basics here. I'm not a computer expert, I just wanted to cover enough basic information so if your specs don't meet the requirements then you'll be able to understand how that might impact you attempting to play Paralives. Starting with the processor, this basically handles the calculations and logic for your computer, so not just for the game but also the operating system and other programs. So if your processor doesn't meet the requirements, the game will probably be slow and laggy or have some issues with freezing. For RAM or memory, this is basically temporary memory and it basically stores information to help things load faster later. So if you don't have enough RAM, you might have some issues with your game crashing or lagging. And we also have the graphics card, and this literally does what it says, it's for graphics, so visuals, so literally what you see on the screen, including things like shadows and textures as well. If you don't have a good graphics card, the graphics will probably not be great in the game, and you might also have some issues with frame rate, which is also known as FPS or frames per second. So this is the number of images your computer shows each second, so the higher the FPS, the smoother the movement of things will look. And if you have a low FPS from like a low end graphics card, then the graphics might look laggy and choppy. So especially when things are moving around, you're not going to see an animation smoothly move from, you know, one point to another. Something else to note here for graphics cards is that the specs will say RTX and there's another one for RX. So RTX is NVIDIA and RX is AMD. It's basically just the brand. So you can go with either. It doesn't really matter. Just thought I'd point that out. That it might help you work out what you have. So now that we have that out of the way, let's go through how to work out what your computer specs are if you don't know what you have. On Windows, you can search for dxdiag, D-X-D-I-A-G, and this thing will come up that says run command. You just need to click on that, and that will open this DirectX diagnostic tool. So the first page that loads is the system page, and this is going to give you some information about your operating system, processor, 
RAM and DirectX version. The RAM here will possibly be in megabytes, which is MB. So if that's the case, you'll need to divide it by a thousand to convert it to gigabytes. So here I have about 32,000 megabytes of RAM, which is about 32 gigabytes of RAM. So you'll just need to note that down somewhere. And then the second tab for display, this is where you'll find your graphics card information. So here at the top, we can see I have NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070. So again, note that down and then we can compare that to the actual required specs. I don't have a Mac, so unfortunately I can't show you this, but to find basically the same information for Mac, you just need to go to system settings, general, and then about, and it should give you roughly the same information. So how do we check if our computer specs actually meet the requirements? So let's start with Windows PC and we'll start with processor. So they only really mentioned Intel Core i5 and AMD Ryzen 5. Usually there's some numbers after this, like Core i5 10200H or something like that, but here they don't really specify. So I'm not really sure if they mean a specific one or just i5 in general. But yeah, if you have an i5, it's probably going to be fine. But the higher the number here, the better generally. So a Core i7, for example, should be better than an i5 and a Ryzen 7 should be better than a Ryzen 5. But as long as you have Intel Core i5 or AMD Ryzen 5 it should be fine. So memory or RAM is pretty straightforward as well. You just want to make sure that the RAM that you have is equal to or greater than the amount shown here. So hopefully the recommended like you'd want to have 16 gigabytes of RAM or more to meet the recommended specs but as long as you have at least 12 gigabytes then you're probably okay. Graphics again is a little bit more difficult. So there are some benchmarking websites for graphics cards and also processors as well. I didn't really mention that before. A lot of these websites really confused me because I really don't understand a whole lot about graphics cards in technical detail, but there is this one that I found that lets you compare graphics cards. So I'm just gonna show you that as an example, but you're free to use whatever websites you find. So this is techpowerup.com and they have a GPU specs section. So you would just search for the GPU that you have. So for me, I have RTX 4070. So I'll type that in and we can see that in the list so I'll just click on that and then if you scroll down a little bit you'll see this relative performance section and this has like a little bar chart and we can see my one here is highlighted in yellow and we can see that the bar ends about here so what you want to do is just compare this to the one from the parallel specs so I'm just going to go Control F and the recommended graphics card is RTX 2060 so I'm just going to pop in RTX 2060 and so it's found the super version obviously I don't want that I'm just going to go to the next one um, so here GeForce RTX 2060 so that is the NVIDIA graphics card that it recommends and we can see that the bar ends way earlier than my one so this chart indicates that my graphics card is probably going to perform better than the required graphics card so I'm probably fine in this case but if yours is less if it's a, if it's quite a bit lower then you might have trouble with your graphics for Mac I think it's quite easy because you've only really got the like the Apple M chip and the RAM to check so again with RAM as long as you've got at least 16 gigabytes of RAM or more then you're meeting the recommended and again for minimum as long as you've got at least 12 gigabytes then you're probably fine and for the processor and graphics if you have an Apple M2 or above you're probably okay here too. After all of this if you're still not sure about whether or not your computer is powerful enough to run Paralives on the official discord they did create a new channel called system requirements questions and you can screenshot your specs and send them through there and hopefully someone will get back to you on whether or not your computer is going to work with it or not. If you're not on Discord or if you don't want to post in the Discord, there is also a post on Reddit called Paralive Spec Questions Master Thread, so you can post your details on there as well and hopefully someone will answer. But I wouldn't recommend asking me in the comments. I'm absolutely not an expert. I only know the very basics, so I don't want to give you wrong information. I do recommend the official Discord or Reddit. There's probably a lot more knowledgeable people on there. Now for the big question, if your computer doesn't meet the minimum specs, should you upgrade or get a new computer specifically for Paralives? Before I answer that, I want to first highlight that Steam has a really great refund policy. So if you have less than two hours of playtime and it's within two weeks of purchasing the game, you can get a refund on the game for basically any reason. I do recommend looking at the Steam refunds page to make sure though, because that has all of the information. But with that in mind, if your specs are slightly below the minimum, I probably wouldn't recommend upgrading at this point. I think it would be worth waiting until the game actually comes out and actually trying it on your computer. So if it runs, then great, you've just saved a whole bunch of money but if it doesn't run well then you can either get a refund on steam as long as you don't play more than two hours or you can then make the decision to upgrade your computer if you want to 
If your specs are way below the minimum required, like maybe you have a really old PC or you're planning to upgrade it anyway, then obviously that's your choice, but you will probably have a much better time if your computer does meet the required specs. But even with that in mind, you don't have to rush to upgrade it now. It is a big decision to drop a whole bunch of money on a new computer or upgrading parts, so you can wait until other people publish reviews of the game, or if you want to watch some gameplay first before you make the decision on whether or not it's worth upgrading or not. I'll definitely be doing some let's plays when the game comes out and I'm I'm sure many other creators will too, but in the end the choice is yours. You can upgrade if you want to, but if you're on the fence on whether or not you are even going to like Paralives, then yeah, I wouldn't recommend upgrading until you're like certain that you actually want the game and it's worth spending a whole bunch of extra money for. Anyway, I hope you found that helpful and I hope your computer is also able to run the game as well. I'm so glad this information is finally out there and I'm sure we'll be hearing even more information about the game in the next few weeks before release, but that's all for now. I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone!